What exactly are the characteristics that are necessary in creating a truly amazing Bond villain? The greatest villains in the Bond franchise vary greatly from sinister to camp and from having grand plans of world domination to having plans that have a smaller scale but are more personal to Bond himself. The Bond villain has become an almost entire point of discussion and there is always a great deal of speculation of who will play the next Bond villain in the years leading up to the next film when no official announcements have yet to be made. So let's take a look at some of the best Bond villains in no particular order. Tiago Rodriguez, better known as Raul Silva, completely dominated every scene he was in, in 2012 Skyfall. Skyfall is one of the best Bond films. It nails so many aspects perfectly, or at least near perfectly. This ranges from the performances, to the cinematography, to the camera work, to the script, to the set design, and anything else. One of the things that Skyfall does so well is its main villain, Raoul Silva as played by Javier Bardem, a genius piece of casting. It says a lot that in a cast that consists of Ray Fiennes, Daniel Craig, Judi Dench, Ben Whishaw, and Naomi Harris, to name it a few, that Javier Bardem is still the standout performer in the entire film. The unemphatic and reckless actions from Silver, along with his brilliantly written backstory, make for a fantastic character. Bardem is clearly having an absolute blast playing this character, and as a result, we the audience are having a blast watching Silver, truly one of the best villains in the whole series, who actually succeeds in his goal. Ernst Stavro Blofeld what can be said of this character? Unlike virtually every Bond villain to put to the screen, Blofeld has been played by multiple actors, each giving their own take on the character. So I'll attempt to go through every live action Eon Blofeld. Blofeld first appeared in From Russia With Love, though his face was obscured. This added such a great sense of mystery. Who is this guy? Occasional glimpses were given, but nothing of his full face. And yet despite having a hidden face, Blofeld is an intimidating screen presence, being able to bend the spectre of grunts to do his bidding. Or perhaps that should be in spite, but never mind. Anthony Dawson's physical performance may not be something worth mentioning, but it very much is. The little details like the way he would sit or move his arms or hands to emphasise a point help create this character. Eric Pullman's voice perfectly suited Blofeld, calm and sinister. Just oozes pure villainy, and this is before Blofeld became camp and was treated here far more seriously. After another obscured appearance in Thunderball, Blofeld was finally revealed in 1967's You Only Live Twice. Donald Pleasance was frankly inspired casting for this role. I know that his version has been parodied more than most, such examples being Dr. Evil, but in this context of the movie, Donald Pleasance is practically perfect as Blofeld. The way he speaks and his body language, along with his brilliant facial scar, made for a delightfully villainous character. Pleasance is perhaps the best remembered Blofeld, partly because he was the first one to appear physically in full, and because in my opinion, he was just incredible, stealing every scene he was in. He made Jung live twice. Telly Savalas played Blofeld in a very different way to Pleasance. Savalas is much more physically dominating and actually ends up in a few fist fights with Bond. Due to following the On Her Majesty's Secret Service novel so loyally, Blofeld doesn't recognise Bond when they first meet, thus creating a continuity error. But I can let it slide, it was a mistake and that's that, nothing more. Savalas isn't quite as menacing as Pleasance, but to be fair to Savalas, there is now a greater physical threat which was certainly lacking before. Charles Grey played Blofeld to make people laugh. Unlike the other Blofelds who were intimidating and evidently evil and morally broken individuals, this Blofeld is silly and fun. While Grey was playing the same character that his predecessors played rather than a rebooted version, his wonderfully camp performance while jarring from the earlier Blofelds feels totally consistent with what the rest of Diamonds Are Forever was like. That's why Grey's performance doesn't even remotely bother me. Blofeld appears to be somewhat polite to Bond, offering him a chance to smoke in You Only Live Twice, for example, which is hilarious given Blofeld's role as an international criminal mastermind. It's easy to see why Grey may be considered a lousy villain, but in the context of Diamonds Are Forever, who gives a toss? I suppose I should mention the unnamed wheelchair-bound ball man who threatens Bond in the pre-title sequence of Fear Eyes Only. While it's never confirmed in any way that this man is Blofeld, it's pretty clear who it is. Due to complex legal issues that I needn't go into, the man is unnamed and we never get a proper look at him, perhaps also for this reason. The final Blofeld on the list is Christoph Waltz who appeared in Spectre and will reappear in No Time to Die. Waltz is probably the weakest Eon Blofeld and that's a Blofeld that we know with 100% certainty is actually Blofeld. He gives a decent performance but it's ultimately underwhelming which is a shame as Waltz is a fantastic actor. Hopefully his character will be better written in No Time to Die and his performance is ramped up. 
Auric Goldfinger was probably the first memorable villain in the 007 franchise. Like all of the other best Bond villains, he owns every scene he appears in. Auric Goldfinger was played by Gret Fogue, but was dubbed over and instead voiced by Michael Collins. Dubbing was a common practice during this era of film. Many characters during the early Connery era were dubbed for numerous reasons. However, Gert Frobe is fantastic as Goldfinger anyway. A truly memorable and thrilling performance. There's a reason why Goldfinger has gone down as one of the best Bond villains ever. He's resourceful, he's clever, but like Blofeld, is also quite charming. This seems to be a Bond villain trait in several cases. Jumping from the villain of Goldfinger, let's take a look at the villain of Goldeneye, Alec Trevelyan, otherwise known as 006. Unlike the other villains mentioned so far, Alec is written more like a real person. In the film's opening moments, you get a sense that Bond and Trevelyan are genuine friends. So when it's revealed that he's a villain, it works fantastically and makes for a more engaging third act than what would have otherwise been. In 1995, it was quite a new thing for Bond to have a personal connection with the villain. Now it's quite a trope of cinema. So watching Goldeneye for the first time in 1995 would have been great from this perspective, along with the rest of the film, which is obviously brilliant, as if it needed saying. This reasonably grounded approach to writing this villain helped make Alec Trevelyan a highly memorable Bond adversary. You may be surprised that I've included Franz Sanchez in this list, but for me, he just makes for such a brilliant bastard. This may be because he appeared in License to Kill, which outside the Bond fan community has become largely forgotten about. However, Sanchez, while clearly a very underrated villain, works very effectively as a match for Bond, both physically and psychologically. Sanchez is a very realistic type of Bond villain. He doesn't live in a hollowed out volcano with plans of world domination or triggering World War III. His ambitions are, sort of are the sort that you read in the news in relation to drug cartels. Robert DeVee made the role so much better than it would have been had Sanchez been played by a less competent or experienced actor. While License to Kill may lack in parts, it more than makes up for it when it comes to its hero-villain dynamic, and the scenes between Dalton and Davi are among the film's highlights. While the sillier villains are a hoot to watch, sometimes, and maybe more often than that, it's great to bring things back down to earth. Le Chief, or more specifically, Le Chief from the 2006 version of Casino Royale. Simply because in the other television and film adaptations, none of their Le Chiefs even come close to the Le Chief that appeared in Daniel Craig's debut Bond film. In Casino Royale, Le Chief is at the end of his rope and is under enormous pressure from his creditors, later revealed to be Mr. White. Because Le Chief is under such pressure, this makes him more compelling as a character and far more interesting than previous on-screen versions of Le Chief. Mads Mikkelsen is absolutely fantastic in the role, nothing more needs to be said about his performance because it's just repeating the obvious. Mikkelsen is a very capable actor. While not a physical match for Bond, Le Chief is so well written that it doesn't really matter. The audience can even begin to understand Le Chief's motivations and his outlook on the world. It's it's actually quite rare for this aspect to exist in a Bond villain. I haven't mentioned every Bond villain, and certainly not every great Bond villain, but these are just some of the best Bond villains from my perspective, or at least the most noteworthy. What are your favourite Bond villains and why? Let me know in the comments below.